Hello, everybody. Um, today, we have a, a, a speaker here. Sorry, I'm stumbling here. <laughs> um, so Biswat Mohapatra is from IBM, and um, he has an interesting uh, ideas and uh, interesting discussion about uh, AWS pipelines, um, CI, CD pipelines on the AWS and how they um, can enable your enterprise um, through the ideas of digital transformation of your applications um, and your data. And um, so he has some interesting ideas here today that he wants to present. And uh, so let me, uh, without any further ado, I want to introduce uh, Biswat. Uh, and I want to say thank you for joining me and also presenting today um, on this uh, great topic. So. Okay, so thank you, Jonathan, and good morning, good afternoon, everyone, depending on the part of the world you are joining from. Uh, and thanks for the opportunity for me, giving me this opportunity to talk to all of you today. Uh, I'm Vistrajit Mahapatra, Partner, Executive Director Cloud Migration Factory at IBM. Uh, permanently around 25 years of experience and last five years in cloud migration, cloud modernization, and cloud native development. Uh, when I say cloud, uh, I, I have expertise in AWS, Azure, Google, as well as IBM Cloud. And I'm also a DevOps Institute uh, Global Ambassador, AWS APN Ambassador got several CIO awards in the past, uh, comes from a strong technical background. Uh, DevSecOps implementation in a hybrid multi-cloud world is my passion. And that's why you see the topic today, AWS CI CD pipeline that enables our clients enterprise digital transformation journey. I'll be talking on embracing AWS CI CD pipeline enterprise digital transformation today. So, as we all know, everything is changing around us. The world is becoming more intelligent, more interconnected, and more instrumented. And disruption has been happening to all ways of our life today. Of course, it was there from the time immemorial, but the pace on which the disruptions are happening to our life and to our work, it's increasing exponentially as you speak, right, in the event of uh, industry 4.0 and so on and so forth, right? So the faster disruptions, that's kind of disrupting the entire industry today. That's giving rise to a new business paradigm that the accelerated shift towards this new business reinvention model, so to say, which is centered around new business models where the need is to reimagine the business processes and reinvent the industry and build businesses around richer experiences as we move along from here. The second important tenet is new age to work. How can we leverage actionable insights and make our operations responsive to meet our growing clients' demands. And the third tenet is focus on building new expertise, focus on building restless talent and achieving a very well orchestrated ecosystem. So how do we really embrace the digital reinvention journey? As you know, with all the changes that I talked about, that's the fulcrum of digital transformation today. It's very difficult to imagine to lay the foundation without having a secured hybrid multi-cloud platform. The secured hybrid multi-cloud platform is going to build on culture of agile innovation. Agility and flexibility is going to be the key. And on and over that platform, we have to leverage exponential technologies. Cognitive automation, AIML, IoT, blockchain, lot of intelligent workflows, as well as next-gen applications, all fueled by data to drive those predictive analytics and proactive intelligence to help our clients achieve their cognitive digital reinvention journey in the coming days. 
So when we talk about hybrid, multi-cloud, secured is going to be the foundation. Uh, it's going to be built upon on a resilient infrastructure, pervasive platforms and tools, embedded security practices. So moving to cloud with DevOps is going to be the crucible for the digital reinvention journey. So to put it into simple terms, cloud with DevOps is going to be the ticket for digital reinvention. No matter whether you are creating cloud strategy, creating cloud transformation roadmap for your client as an advisory engagement, or once you create the cloud transformation roadmap, you are migrating the workloads to cloud, or modernizing the workloads to cloud, or rationalizing for cloud, or building cloud native applications or doing application operations on the cloud, DevOps is going to be the foundation service, uh, which is basically prefabricated for consumption uh, to drive your digital transformation agenda, making it more scalable, more agile, more productivity, quality, and uh, time to market, uh, uh, providing you time to market advantage there. So how AWS cloud strategy is going to be augmented by DevOps? I'll just lay the framework for all of your understanding here. Uh, of course, this is going to have flexible entry points, but let's think about a client situation where your client is having large number of monolithic applications within the enterprise, built probably several years back, starting from mainframe, to Visual Basic, to Fortran, to Fox Pro, so on and so forth. We know the way the uh, uh, application and technology landscape has evolved over a period of time. And your client's key need is uh, today, if you really look at, the CIOs are looking for how can I become more cost effective? How can I become more agile? How can I become more interoperable? Uh, so that uh, I remain the competitive age in the marketplace. So it's a paramount importance to do the business value assessment, to do the technology value assessment, to do the strategic value assessment and cost value assessment and create a cloud transformation roadmap, identifying what applications could be tolerated, what applications could be integrated, what applications could be migrated or eliminated, right? That's what I call as time matrix. T for tolerated, I for integrated, M for migrated, and E for eliminated. Once you create that time matrix, you do a deep discovery and understand the affinities and dependencies of your workloads. Uh, you identify the MOOC groups, and as part of your intake process, you Based on the affinities and dependencies, you create the uh, workload move groups and OE plans that fits into your factory for a factory-based execution model. Uh, and then you continue your migration, modernization, or cloud native execution before you run and manage those applications on the target cloud environment. The key tenet here is, the key parameter here is that, how do you really run the analytics to get those insights to identify uh, the workloads that can be migrated, the workloads that can be modernized, or the workloads that can be containerized in a target uh, cloud deployment model uh, or in a AWS cloud deployment model, so to speak here, right? And then you identify if there's a monolith, which is legacy, let's say mainframe COBOL or natural or PL1 based application, how do you really extract the business rules? How do you break those monoliths and strangle those monoliths and build cloud native microservices in your target AWS cloud environment. So the approach is manifold, the entry point is flexible, but it has to be a very guided step-by-step -step approach, what we call as continuous modernization approach that we need to follow. And when you are taking this continuous modernization approach, you need to focus on next-gen automation, you need to focus on ecosystem collaboration, ecosystem tools, uh, to leverage uh, so that you can drive right automation. And your core foundation is going to be agile design thinking and DevOps. You co-create with your client, you co-execute with your client, and you collaborate with your client 
to meet the end to end digital transformation agenda so that's basically the overarching aws cloud strategy that's going to be augmented by devops so how how do we really build cloud native applications on aws right uh, you can develop cloud native applications on aws uh, what i call as at enterprise scale with startup speed or you can reengineer your cloud native microservices on aws at the enterprise scale step by step approach like i said you co create you do the design thinking workshop with your clients uh, do the idea proofing you perform rapid uh, proof of concept develop the pilot develop minimum viable product and then scale uh, the continuous enhancement mechanism right uh, so either you can rewrite by doing automated uh, reverse engineering to some kind of solution blueprint and then forward engineering to your target native cloud environment or containerizing your target aws cloud platform so that's the approach you can take to build your cloud native applications on aws so devops on ci cd just to introduce this automating the repeatable delivering to the customer faster that's going to be the mission you have the business stakeholders you have the idea then you take a very step by step approach starting from your continuous business planning to continuous development continuous integration continuous deployment continuous testing continuous release continuous feedback and optimization so that your entire continuous loop is uh, closed loop process and uh, you kind of incrementally build upon that so what's happening here how you can realize native ci cd pipeline on aws as we all know aws provides several differentiated services to facilitate implementation of robust ci cd pipeline aws ci cd capability facilitates effective version control mechanism building packaging and testing the components this also enables consistency of frequently changing the environments and leading into optimized delivery of your software quality so the million dollar question now is how ci cd pipeline can be implemented with aws deploying code changes is a seamless process in aws cloud with aws code pipeline aws code pipeline comprised of components like aws code commit aws code build and aws code deploy code commit is a source control repository where all code changes are committed code pipeline creates end to end continuous delivery pipeline that detects the code changes and pulls the change to rebuild the components this facilitates agile delivery of features automating your build test and release processes code pipeline can utilize a parameterized aws cloud formation template to rapidly create the development environment then it requests aws code deploy to install and configure applications in the development environment code pipeline can help you run the test scripts before the deployment the process steps are repeated for test as well as your production environment the components produced by code build are promoted to the test and production environment through continuous delivery process code pipeline can be configured for the blueprint deployment patterns with the aws cloud for ms cloud uh, formation it can be leveraged to automatically build and test your changes to aws cloud formation templates before promoting to the production this release process ensures rapid and reliable changes to your aws infrastructure so the question is what is the benefits of aws cloud native ci cd workflows there you can achieve seamless integration easy integration with your github code repository on premise jenkins build server various custom and integrated uh, uh, dashboards as well as various third party tools you can achieve the integration as well coming to quick start there is no overhead of provisioning or managing the servers if you are using aws cloud native ci cd workflows the code pipeline can be configured and integrated 
with your existing services. Number three, the biggest advantage is configurable pipeline for your workloads. The pipeline can be configured for non-containerized or containerized or serverless workloads that can be deployed either in EC2 or ECS or EKS as well as in your uh, Lambda serverless functions. The next biggest advantage is high speed of delivery. Your automated build, test, and deploy is going to enable testing the code changes and detecting the defects uh, when impact is minimal and res resolving those faster. This will ensure productivity, quality, as well as time to market advantage again. And the most important advantage is that you can achieve low cost since there is no server to be provisioned, no software to be procured, and this will directly lead into cost savings for your enterprises. So what are various use cases that you can leverage if you are realizing native CI CD pipeline on AWS? As you see on the bottom part of the slide, you have four distinct use cases. The first one is non-containerized workloads. The second use case is containerized workloads. The third use case is serverless workloads. And the fourth one is static web hosting on AWS Cloud. Let's understand each of those use cases in little detail. When you talk about CI CD for non-containerized workloads, what does that mean basically, right? Your source repository is going to be AWS code commit or Amazon S3. Your AWS code build is going to pull the changes from the code commit and build the components for you. Your resulted components are dependent on the build scripts and the configured technology. And it could be Python, it could be Node.js, Java, or even Ruby on Rails, right? Your target development environments could be dev, test, and prod. Your target resources are AWS EC2 instances, it is EC2 auto scaling groups, as well as your AWS Elastic Bin Stack. During the continuous delivery process, promotion of already built components to the higher environments can be done. Build states can be skipped, and components can also be deployed on test and production state. So that's the advantage you can get in non containerized workloads. You are pulling the changes from the code commit and building the components there. If I talk about containerized workloads, your source repository could be AWS code commit, Amazon S3, Elastic Container Registry, which is popularly known as AWS ECR. Your AWS code build pulls the changes from the code commit and builds the Docker image there. And the Docker image is deployed to a specific ECS or EKS cluster by specifying the cluster resource naming. During continuous delivery process, promotion of already built Docker images to the higher environments can be done. Build states again can be skipped and the Docker images can again, like we talked about non-containerized workloads, the Docker images can be deployed on the test and production environment as well. Coming to the serverless workloads here again, the source repository could be AWS code commit and Amazon S3. The source code for serverless Lambda functions can be either Java or JavaScript or Python or Ruby on Rails again. The source package, again, important point, the source package consists of AWS SAM template, which is basically a .ml file that provides the mapping to the handler to the exposed URI resource. Source package also consists of AWS code build specifications, which is basically your build spec.ml uh, mentioning the runtime environment for the function. An AWS code build specification is going to install required packages and going to upload the deployment package to Amazon S3. Coming to CI CD for static uh, website hosting, which is our uh, last uh, use case. You can still have source repository as AWS code commit and AWS S3. Your code pipeline is used here to enable deployment of web pages for static 
website hosting where the version control for the web pages can be again done using your code commit. Build stage is skipped. AWS code deploy is used to deploy updated or new web pages in the respective Amazon S3 bucket for your website hosting. This ensures standard process for updating the static website contents, right? So these are the use cases that you can leverage when you are building cloud native applications uh, from the AWS CI CD pipeline that's available to all of us. What are various enterprise grade AWS DevOps tools? So there are plenty, as you see, there are a spectrum of CI CD tools that I already talked about. You can use AWS Code Star, which is basically a uh, software as a service model for all of those components I talked about. AWS Code Build, Code Commit, Code Deploy, as well as Code Pipeline. You can have various CLI and scripting tools, uh, AWS CLI or tools for power sales, right? Uh, various languages support, various SDKs that supported, right? Uh, various CLI and scripting tools, languages, mobile development mechanism. You have access to monitoring and tracing through AWS X-Ray as well as Amazon CloudWatch. You have infrastructure as code through CloudFormation, as well as Cloud Dev Kit CDK. Uh, of course, there are IDs and DevOps toolkits that you can leverage when you are uh, doing an enterprise-grade cloud-native implementation. So AWS CI CD for microservices and containerized workloads. Uh, this is a fully managed pipeline for AWS cloud-native application deployment. This has seamless integration with container platforms, whether you are using AWS Elastic Container Service, Elastic Kubernetes Service, AWS Fargate, or AWS Lambda functions. You can, you can achieve seamless integration there. Optimize and integrated support to Elastic Container Registry, as I already talked about, AWS ECR. Uh, manage CI CD, you can have blue green deployment, canary or rolling updates, containers deployment. Um, highly automated pipeline, right? So you don't have uh, very near zero manual intervention, right? And a pipeline to GitHub startup soon. So those are the benefits that you could achieve. Uh, to summarize the benefits of AWS Cloud Native CI CD workloads, we talked about seamless integration, quick start, configurable pipeline, high speed delivery, as well as low cost deployment, right? So how to set up your DevOps transformation journey then? You have great tools, great processes and methods coming up from AWS in, in AWS Code Star, right? So how do you really set up your DevOps transformation journey? The very first step is basically you have to take a guided step-by-step -step approach as I spoke earlier. You have to co-create the aspirational vision and strategy with your clients to deliver the value to the client faster through IT. You have to evaluate various program elements of future state as your next step. Define your business outcomes, define your success criteria, and make DevOps as part of your DNA. Perform certain pilot transformations, rationalize the efforts, establish the entire value stream, do the value chain mapping, and prove out the value from the pilots. Then scale your incremental transformation and in iterative incremental fashion as part of your continuous modernization journey and then make DevOps as a culture for your client's organization in their transformation journey by embedding DevOps transformation program into the client's culture. So what's happening here basically, right? So if you really look at the uh, pre-pandemic era, probably the transformation approach was all driven around inside out transformation. Whereas with pandemic and the new world order, more and more clients are embracing their digital transformation journey in an outside in transformation model, basically, right? And when you're embracing that outside in, in transformation model, a point to point solution of one strategic problem leading to one strategic solution is not going to work, right? So more and more, uh, you need to really focus on multiple strategic envisioning aspects where you need to look at what is going to be the probable outcome, what is going to be the possible outcome, what is going to be the plausible outcome in your client's overall digital transformation journey and keeping track of that and implementing uh, CI CD cloud native pipeline for cloud native development utilizing AWS cloud 
it's going to help clients organizations and your clients to embark the digital reinvention journey and become successful in their digital transformation agenda so that's all what i wanted to share with you all uh, to pave the way with aws ci cd pipeline thank you very much thanks for your time and if there are any questions i'll be happy to answer those thank you so much for that that's a really good explanation of uh you know, the wide array of services, as we know, Amazon offers um, lots of different services um, for all your needs, going from you know, building your application to deployment um, to then to running it in production. Um, it's uh, getting started on, on uh, a lot of people are getting started on, um, you know, setting up a pipeline, setting up that within an organization, um, not everybody, or they have legacy ones. You know, many of the people that I, that I talk to in, in workshops, they, uh, you know, I ask them and then, you know, can you raise your hands? How many people here are using Jenkins, right? So it's usually more than 50% of the room is like, yep, we're all using Jenkins CI CD um, as part of our PowerPoint. So this is an idea of saying, well, let me, let me embrace uh, more of what Amazon is offering to me as services. I'll, I'll tell you, Jonathan, uh, what I see basically, right? So there's a method to the madness, right? So I have seen while consulting to global Fortune 500 clients, I have seen a lot of people for the intent of doing DevOps or acquiring a lot of DevOps tools, right? Yeah. Uh, spending a lot of money as well, implementing those tools. But uh, how do you really build those connecting pieces between those tools and the tools with all those telemetry and other information, logging, traceability, everything that tools really collect. How do you really make meaning out of this, right? That's the place probably many of the DevOps implementations are not driving right results, so to say, basically, right? So right. one is, so I look at it more as a cultural shift than a technology problem where you implement tools and you think that your DevOps implementation is done, right? Probably that's that's not the right approach the way I'm observing basically, right? Exactly. It's an opinionated stack that's set up for you because there is decision overload in this yeah. industry, but there's, there's lots of different ways of, of uh, deploying things. Uh, yeah, and the other part is the system. When you think about system dynamics, systems are not about known unknowns, right? There are so many unknown unknowns that you need to really take into account, right? Mm -hmm. So unless you plan for those, you observe those and uh, build those end-to-end -end pipeline, whether it's DevOps automation, whether you're site reliability engineering or observability, uh, you, you you are not going to uh, get the right outcome at the end, basically, right? So definitely while you implement your automation of DevOps pipeline, focus on those unknown unknowns. You cannot ignore those unknown unknowns uh, if you are looking for right value. That's right. I agree. I agree. So there's ideas also about, um, so one thing about you know, going with the services and opinionated stack, there's this idea that people have in the back of mind saying, well, how, you know, if I go with this stack and this, Opinion, it's going to save me time, but I also know that there's a cost to that because uh, I could get into something that might be a little more proprietary. Right? Is there, you know, there's uh, ideas in the CD Foundation about the Tecton project as a as a build pipeline engine. And I know I'm getting a little bit into the weeds in terms of a technology solution, um, but one of the things that Tecton is offering is something like uter a more of a uh, ubiquitous language. Um, as a, for declaring your pipelines, not just declaring the the little tasks, but you know the global tasks of of your pipelines as a general language. Is in this stack is there the ability to do things like yes, we embrace uh, the idea of a Tecton pipeline um, or other ideas about you know CI CD with meshes and those kinds of things. Um, is that being integrated into these solutions? Absolutely, right? I think more and more uh, that's, I think the overall solution is also maturing, right? So if you look at three years back, the way DevOps was, right? Mm -hmm. And the companies, the way they were embracing today, I think we have come a long way basically, right? Mm -hmm. Starting from your defined state to optimized state to probably a more uh, matured to optimized state, right? So I think the future is going, going to be all open, even open programming languages people are talking about now, what, like if you keep track of model driven architecture and object management group, now people are talking about platform agnostic languages, right? Mm -hmm. So that, that's the future, right? So, mm -hmm. and have a platform agnostic language 
and have a mechanism by which from the platform agnostic language, you can create platform specific code across any of your platforms. Excellent, good. Um, at the end, you were mentioning delivery models. And I thought it was interesting too, because people, as people are maturing in their organizations, you know, like elevating the maturity model, they're starting to look at things like, oh, I can actually do a canary deploy, or I can have multiple versions of the same service and different people can experience those different services. Um, so notice that that's, that's part of the delivery pipeline. Is there something that's running on, um, at runtime? You know, they call it day two operations. Is, is part of the runtime operation? Is there something that's looking at uh, canaries and saying, and, and what's the notification uh, mechanism so that, you know, if a canary is not working and uh, what are the services on the, that end? Because that's, that's more, the, more of the maturity model, the, the later things that people are starting to get into. I'm just going to speak to that. Yeah, that's the telemetry part I was talking about, right? So even prior to that, uh, let's say, like the example I was giving, you have a large monolithic applications or large monolithic portfolio, you are breaking it and uh, you are moving large workloads to cloud. How do you really plan for your DevOps implementation, right? How do you really identify your, uh, so you, you can call it as pipeline or backlog, right? How do you fit into the factory? How do you execute it? And how do you automate each of those execution steps? And while you are doing that, how do you get a, uh, uh, like what we call a solution operation center, a view of uh, dashboard view of everything, how it's faring, what is really is happening on a runtime basis so that you can take uh, proactive measures. And of course, there are now uh, implementations where you can have self-healing applications, right? For example, or, uh, or you predict and uh, uh, correct something before things goes wrong, right? And all automated, you don't want any manual intervention there, right? Right. And you know, there are, of course, I'm not naming the tool vendors, but there are so many service providers and tool vendors who has those capabilities today, which clients are leveraging. They do, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's more, it's changing all the time. And then again, the nice thing about uh, the stack is that you can rely on uh, AWS to build out that stack for you uh, and then keep up with the uh, changing scape, uh, landscape of what's going on with all the different It's ways. like your health checkup, right? The way you do your health checkup and you have various parameters and how do you monitor, how do you stack that so that you, you have an inference out of that. It's exactly the same way if I use the analogy. Well, that's excellent. Yeah, good. All right, well, thank you so much. Is there any uh, parting words that you want to share with anybody? And saying, yeah, I want to. No, I think I'm all good and I thoroughly enjoyed our discussion, Jonathan. And uh, thank you. I'm a strong believer of DevOps and DevSecOps practices. And uh, I think uh, the whole industry is changing and, and uh, moving towards the right direction. And I'm very confident this is going to be a foundation service for any client's digital reinvention agenda in coming days. And I'm well, sure. thank you. That's very good introduction to, for anybody who's new to it, this idea. Uh, it's a very good uh, understanding uh, what Amazon is providing in this CI CD platform. I agree, CI CD, it's, it's your, I always call it the, the spinal column of your, of your success uh, to be able to, do, to deliver your applications and cloud native systems. Um, you've got to have a good um, DevOps team and uh, the technology is along with it. So thank you for introducing us. Thank you. Absolutely. And thanks, Jonathan. Thanks for your time. Thoroughly enjoyed. Thank you. Excellent. Have a good day and take care.